filling in for my good friend, Brian Fisher. It is an honor to be with you. You are a powerful audience. It's it's so super cool to be with you. We are talking about a few things. We talked about, uh, well, the, 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 the voice of those of us who are believers rising up and being noisy and annoying Hollywood. That's a beautiful thing. I am so proud of that. And it's so important at a time when most adults surveyed think that Harry Potter and Hunger Games are biblical and they don't realize that Noah is actually a true story. That's the number one question I get when I debate atheists, by the way. You don't really believe in Adam and Eve and Noah. And not just atheists, by the way. I'll tell you there are folks in certain religions that would call themselves Christians that don't believe in Noah and Adam and Eve. You can't make this stuff up, right? Because, see, the thing is, we don't want to have to believe something that if we were God, we didn't think we could do. We don't think we don't think we limit God to human size. We don't understand the whole omnipotence and omniscience and omnipresence and all of those things of God. I even had to my my sweet mom, who I adore, and she is a, such a strong Christian, one of those sweet believers who just has always believed not a real critical personality like mine. And uh, she said something to me the other day about she didn't want to, she, she knows the Bible said that, but she didn't want to believe about uh, about t- t- that we're that we are not immediately in heaven, I think is what we were talking about at that moment. And she goes, I, I know the Bible says that, but I just, I don't want to believe that. And, and God understands why I don't want to believe it. Like, mom, you have to believe it. The Bible says it. it, you believe it. You don't get to say you don't believe it. And I kind of did the little God, she didn't mean it thing that I tend to do a lot <laughs> when my family says something that I think might border on blasphemy. And uh, the reason, the thing is that we don't, what, what she, it wasn't that she didn't believe it, it was that she didn't get it. She wasn't understanding omnipresence. She wasn't understanding that there's no space and time that that is a, a, an illusion of, of being here. But there, in our eternal home, that's not the case. And as long as you understand that, you don't have to get stressed out about what you, in your mind, if you were God, couldn't conceive. Because you're not God. It's a beautiful thing. But this is the thing. We are constantly trying to conform God to man. Instead of transforming ourselves to the spiritual beings that we are forgiven and grace filled to be. And in that we make a ton of mistakes. This one is almost beyond comprehension. Clip five, Jeff. This is a congregation that often worships the same way God brought them into the world, unadorned and unashamedly naked. This, however, is February. So on this particular Sunday morning, parishioners are in various states of undress. Some nude, some fully clothed, others topless. He chose to have faith in God. But it's not about the clothes or lack thereof. Stand up on your feet. Pastor Alan Parker is here to bear his soul to Christ and lead his flock down the path of righteousness no matter what they have on. We spared you that video. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I, I, um, I, 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 you. <laughs> That's a radio moment, my friends. I don't think I've ever been speechless, but you just witnessed it. I, and it isn't funny. What it is 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 really tremendously sad. And actually, I mentioned this clip. I actually sent this clip to my dad, who I've talked about before on the show. He's agnostic, and uh, yeah. And anyway, I, I sent this to him, and you know, he says, you know, I would think you would be for this. I would think you would think whatever it took to bring people to God. Um, no, no, no. I mean, I, I. I try not to go around with judgment on my sleeve all the time, but I can tell you that this is a matter of conforming God to man again. And that's what upsets me so badly that we just continue to do that. And I want to say something that's a little edgy. I, I, I will definitely get some people mad at me for this. I don't know if I have any phone lines open for you to call or not. And we're going to get to your calls right after, right after I say this. This will be good. We make some of these same mistakes, my friends, in our churches in the name of Christianity. We are constantly conforming God to man or trying to conform God to man. We are doing things in our churches to try to attract people rather than speaking the truth, which is inherently beautiful and right and noble and attractive. We do it all the time. So before we laugh too loudly, right, judging these people who are just who knows what their issue is. I don't pretend to get it. We should maybe think about looking at our own heart. And wondering how it is we are conforming God to our image rather than trying to transform ourselves into the grace-filled image 
of God. Going now to Whitey calling from Jacksonville, North Carolina. Whitey, welcome to the show. Yes, hello there. Hi there. Um, you ask uh, what we can do. Uh, I have something uh, that the Lord put in my heart a while back. Uh, the thing that happened in the last election is one-third of the Christians didn't vote. They didn't want to vote for a Mormon, and they didn't want to vote for Obama, so they just decided not to vote. That's where we failed at. Um, <laughs> I Wait, Whitey, I want to I want to say something really quickly. Wait, l- hold up, because I just want to say something really quickly. The Mormon thing might have suppressed some of the vote. I think what suppressed the vote more than anything on uh, for Mitt Romney in terms of Christians had more to do with his spineless and wimpy nature in the political arena. We didn't see a fighter in there. And most of us recognized that, uh, you know, an, another John McCain as president I don't care what his religion is. It wasn't going to get us anywhere. And I myself know a lot of Christians who, you know, maybe maybe questioned even the spirituality of a Ronald Reagan, for example. But you knew he was principled. You knew he understood his constitution. You knew he was going to fight for the foundational things about this country that make it great. I just want to say I I get real tired of the leftist media being able to uh, label us as bigots because we will vote for one religion or not another. I'm not sure that's the case here. I don't think this was so much based on on people's religious uh, ideology, although some for sure. And uh, as it was just not wanting another wimpy leader, don't you? Larry, I can tell you this. uh, I voted for Romney and I'm a Christian. Yeah. So Uh, there you go. See? And, you might not uh, have liked it that he was a Mormon, but you did it. Yeah. Just like there's, as you said a while ago, you said something I have tried to say to hundreds of people, is that uh, uh, the churches today, the Bible says there's many false prophets. Yes. And prophets to me is there's many false preachers. And yes. as you said, they're trying to conform God to man instead yes. of the other way around. And I see that in churches all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, And... I don't know uh, if I'm saying this right, but I think the left thinks that we are weak because we didn't vote. Uh, But anyway, um, to get to what you said, uh, what we can do, um, I got a Facebook page that says it's called 20 Million Christian March. The number 20 and then the word million. Mm -hmm. Uh, And all you have to do is if you sign up is to vote. And what we hope to do is down the road, there's a couple of us trying to do this, what we hope to do down the road is everybody show up at their county seat. Not go to Washington, D.C., not go to the state capitol. Show up in your county seat, either at the park or the courthouse, and show our voting power. Because if we don't show the politicians our true voting power, they're still going to think that we're not going to vote. I, I agree. I agree to some degree, Whitey, but I think the work, work work needs to be done in the church. And and I will say that it needs to start absolutely in the pulpit. Uh, we need to understand our pastor should be able to lay out for you what the black robe regimen was. They should be able to lay that out and they should understand it better than anyone. They should be participating in Freedom in the Pulpit Sunday where they speak politics directly to their congregations. And they challenge the IRS to come for them because they won't. Because if they are challenged and they are sued, they will win all the way up to the Supreme Court, and there are a whole group of pastors uh, fighting on that front. And your pastor, if he's not joining them, you should be asking them why. Pastors need to be exhorting right now, not wimpy, standing there in the pulpits talking about flimsy, flamsy stuff that doesn't matter anymore. This is this is war. And I think that pastors need to understand that. And they not only need to be a part of changing the hearts of America, but they need to be a part of leading the politics in this country right now. And I will back them up and I will not hide from it. So I think you nailed it. Why do you, when only, as you said, 50% of Christians, you said one third, but uh, it's actually the numbers I've heard 50% of Christians, evangelical Christians who warm the church pews on Sundays, don't bother to go to the polls on a general election day, which isn't even really where you can make the difference. It's really in the in the in the in the primary elections. And when only 20 percent of Christian women are even voting in a general election, this is a disgrace in our churches. My friends, the blood is on our hands. We can't blame this on uh, on anybody else. And as far as outreach, that's one thing. But if we just if just all Christians, just to say 60 percent of Christians went to the polls this next general election, we couldn't lose that's embarrassing 
So there, you're right, Whitey. We have a big problem here. Well, I want to tell you something. I, I enjoyed you the other day, and I enjoyed you today. And Thank you. I, I, I love Brian Fisher. You know, yes. I love his program. He but, rocks. Uh, I will tell you something. Uh, I enjoy uh, the things that you're saying, and I hope you wake up America. I really do, and God bless you. God bless you right back, Whitey. Thank you so much for that call. We are going to go now to Chris calling from Ohio. Yes, uh, how you doing? I'm going to get right to the point. Great. Uh, it's fabulous to hear you uh, speak of a fight. I'm kind of uh, disappointed with people that call themselves Christians. Yeah. Within the last 10 years, we've had so much taken away from us. Uh, if you take a Bible to school, you're a criminal. Uh, we can't say Merry Christmas, Ten Commandments. Crosses taken away from veteran ceremonies. Who's yeah. allowed it to happen? It hasn't been the ACLU. It hasn't been this administration. It's been spineless Christians in this country that refuse to fight, that want to be meek and mild. You know what? If someone hits, strikes me on the cheek, I'm going to strike him back. And that's the spirit we need to get if we call ourselves Christians. Because if not, they will be coming after everything we have. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you so much for your call. I want to I want to add to that only that I think for those who tell themselves, well, politics is dirty and I don't know if we really need to engage. But you know what? <laughs> You're answering to God, not me. That's all I have to say to you. I think it's a cop out. And I think that uh, Chris is exactly right. And uh, most of you have such brilliance here on this show. I love hosting the show. Thanks again, Brian Fisher and Jeff Reed for letting me do this. Your calls again, 888-589-8840, because you're keeping those phone lines filled just how I like them. So we're going to take on more. And um, we're going to have some little health tips, too, that are in the news that I think you'll enjoy. So you stay with us. More Focal Point with Dr. Gina. Don't forget, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter if you care to look there. Also, DrGinaShow.com is another place you can find me. We'll be back in just a moment with more of your calls. Don't you go away.